you do with introductions and Michael or Samantha, I will have maybe one of you kind of proceed as we have the past meetings with uh, with introductions. Absolutely. So I'm Michael Torres um, with Clark County Community Services. And what I'm going to do is just looking at the participant list. I will uh, call out the name to the next one just so we can do it in an orderly uh, manner. Sam, you're next. Sorry, I struggle with sharing my screen and muting and unmuting myself, but I am Samantha Whitley with uh, Clark County. Uh, Rebecca Royce next. Good morning, Rebecca Royce, Clark County. Uh, the person that's in as Amy, uh, next please. Good morning, Michael. This is Amy Reynolds. I'm the deputy director for SHARE. Thank you, Amy. Welcome. Uh, Brian Cass, next. Oh, Brian Cass, City of Ridgefield. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Cherish? Cherish DeRosher, the City of Battleground. Thank you, Cherish. Uh, David Scott? Good morning, Dave Scott. City of West Eagle. Good morning, David. Uh, Dennis Morrow? Dennis, are you able to unmute yourself and introduce yourself and what uh, agency you represent? I, I see him on camera. He might be frozen. Uh, Dennis uh, is listed as part, uh, participating in the meeting and he's with Janice Youth. So next, Emily. Morning, Emily Lutz, City of Battleground. Thank you, Emily. Jeff? Hi, Jeff Johnson, City of Bliss Center. Jim Hodges, I see you unmute. Uh, I see you've unmuted yourself. We can't hear you yet. Okay, Jim Hodges, City of Canvas. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Councillor Olson. Yeah, uh, Councillor Olson, District Two, Clark County. Councillor Olson, uh, Katie Ulrich. Hi, this is Katie Ulrich. I work at Proud Ground. Thank you, Katie. Um, Lloyd or Sue Neal? Gotcha. Good morning. This is Lloyd and Sue Neal with Battleground Healthcare. Thank you, Lloyd and Sue. Melita? Good morning, everyone. Melita Mosley, Town of Yakult. Thank you, Melita. Um, the person that's listed as M. Wright. I saw you unmute yourself for a moment and then uh, went back to mute, but we didn't hear you. That's Michelle Wright with the city of Washougal. Oh. Gotcha, Michelle. Sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, Scott Conger. Good morning, Scott Conger with Janice Youth Programs. Scott, is there anyone, that's everyone I can see as a participant. Is there anyone else that has uh, not been named? Okay, that is everyone, Councillor Olson. Great, thank you, Michael. Uh, all right, well, let's move on to the agenda then and um, approval of the February 8th, 2021 meeting minutes. Uh, if there are no corrections to the minutes or additions, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Move to approve. You, Dave Scott, I'll second that. Great, thank you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, item three uh, HUD funding updates. Michael, Good morning, everyone. Uh, yes, I'm going to ask Samantha to uh, just go over this information. It's she's it's it's what is in front of you on the slide. So go ahead, Sam. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And you also um, received it in a memo form um, because I wanted to share with you that we did get our entitlement amounts, and so you see uh, about 1.5 million in CDBG entitlement, and um, this is a little bit less than we received last year. Um, we took. 
uh, the housing rehab program income and we reassigned that back to the housing rehab program. And then we had some program income and reprogram funds for infrastructure and social service um, projects. We added that back into the amount that you could um, award. And then we subtracted our administration costs and um, we set aside a little bit for contingency. We set aside a little bit for fair housing activities and project implementation. So your grand total to award to uh, the applications for CDBG funding, our regular um, 2021 awards is 1.1 million. And, and um, the home entitlement was also down a little bit, $553,000 compared to last year. And um, most years we have a lot of reprogrammed money and program income that we include with the awards, but we had to make some accounting adjustments this year. And so to catch up on our, um, how we were awarding the reprogram dollars, we have zero uh, reprogrammed this year, unfortunately. But, um, and after subtracting administration and project implementation, the total home funds available were $488,000. But in the new American Rescue Plan that um, has passed the House and the Senate, um, I think that's the latest update. They are proposing $5 billion in home funds, and that would be um, going out this year. So we'll probably have a um, late spring, early summer meeting with you to award um, additional home funds that are related to homelessness. Uh, as soon as that is actually passed and we get more detail from HUD, we will um, follow up with the board and let you know about that. And then finally, on our um, CB awards, uh, we found we're able to get another 25,000 from administration to add back into the activities. So we uh, only have 286,000 in administration out of the $2 million that um, were our total uh, HUD award. We previously committed $685,000 and you've recommended um, funding for battleground healthcare in the amount of 627,858. So, uh, currently, we have 459185 that has not been awarded in CB dollars. Are there any questions? Uh, thank you, Sam. And just as an update uh, to the American Rescue Plan, is indeed it, it did pass uh, the House and uh, this weekend it passed the Senate uh, with some amendments and it's going back to the House. I think they're expecting passage of it, um, if not this week, next week. Great, thank you. Uh, any, no questions of Samantha with regard to the HUD funding updates? Okay, then we will move on to the 2021 entitlement funds and scoring and selection. And I believe this slide is also gonna be Sam. <laughs> Well, I compiled all of the scores uh, that were submitted, and then I uh, we did have some objective scoring that the staff awarded for match and also for some of the housing project uh, points. So I compiled, um, I averaged all the scores from the Urban County Policy Board members, and then I added the objective scores, and then I ranked the projects. Um, the funding is that is suggested on here is just um, a suggestion. So. Um, under public facilities and neighborhood improvements, CAMIS scored the highest. Um, they were requesting $170,000. $170, Lifeline scored 82.67, and so they were requesting $200,000. And Washougal Hamlet Park scored 80 points, and they were requesting $100,000. So you can see in the CDBG column, um, those were recommended. There was quite a drop off in the scores um, for the next project, which is Battleground Northeast First Street Sidewalks at 70 points and Woodland Beachwood at 69 points. Um, then under Asset and Economic Development, the Hispanic Chamber was the highest scoring um, project at 91.47. So they were requesting $73,200. Proud Ground was second highest scoring at 88.6 points. Uh, they were requesting 300,000 and between the CDBG and home dollars, um, we could, we would be able to fund them the 300,000. And then um, Mercy Corps business IDA program, they were requesting 290,000, they scored 86 points. And um, the amount available in CDBG that would be left would be 221,414. 
And then under the homelessness category, uh, Janice Youth was highest scoring with 93 points and they requested 120,000. Lifeline was second highest scoring with 91 points. They also requested 120,000. Uh, Share was a third highest scoring application at $300,000. And then the two um, construction projects, uh, what really hurt the construction projects was the objective scoring. Um, neither one of them scored any points. It was worth 15 points if they had a mixed income development or if they had units serving zero to 30%. Um, but neither one of these projects happened to be structured that way. So they did not get the extra 15 points. I'm imagining that we could shift the American Rescue Home dollars to the TIBRA programs uh, later in the year and then free up our entitlement funds to um, go towards these construction projects if that is what's something that the board would like to see. But um, this was just my initial take. Um, of course, I ran it by Rebecca and Michael, and now it is uh, for the board's discussion and decision. Any questions of Samantha with regard to the scoring or how we might look at future money? Okay, I don't hear any questions. Uh, what's our next step here? Uh, would, would you guys like to approve this as shown and um, we can move forward with these activities? This is Dave Scott. <clears throat> I would move that we forward the award recommendation to the County Council as shown on this slide. This is Jeff Swanson. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any uh, comments or discussion with regard to the scoring or the awards? Um, any comments from the board? All right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion is approved. Um, thank you so much. And thanks everyone for taking the time to, uh, to do the scoring and um, provide your feedback on that. All right, next item, uh, CDBG CV3 project selection. And next slide, please. And this, this is turning into Sam's UCTV because this slide is also Sam. Okay, hi. Um, so, um, and Lloyd and Sue Neal are here to talk about how their project has kind of shifted over time. We um, have brought the battleground healthcare um, request before the board before. They were previously looking at rehabilitating the building that they were currently in. Um, and as we started looking at the cost to do that and what other options they might um, have available, they found this building which is a beautiful newer building that was already set up for um, medical care. And um, I'll, let me switch to the next slide. This is the total um, funding that they were previously awarded, the amount that we still have available for the COVID response. And so the total funding requested is just over a million. Um, and you can see how they, their current um, building is about 4,800 square feet and their new building will be 7,600 square feet. And I can certainly turn it over to Lloyd and Sue to talk a little bit about the All process. Right, thank you, Sam. Mm -hmm. So the, um, my involvement here started with the original plan of doing the upgrades to the existing facility that Battleground Healthcare has been in for the last 10 years. Uh, but in studying the work required for that building and the amount of money that was going to be spent, I recommended that we explore the other options. And we came across the, uh, the previous legacy healthcare clinic there in Battleground, 7,600 square feet, right on the corner of SR 503 and Eaton Way in Battleground. It's a perfect location for this uh, expansion that we're proposing for Battleground Healthcare Services. High visibility, good access. Uh, public transit and so on, all aspects of uh, being a, a free clinic that uh, we don't share the benefits of in our current location in Meadow Glade. This location allows us to get that high visibility and, and good access for serving our community and will allow us to expand those services 
by the 58%, 59% increase in the available space. In addition, we, because of the uh, COVID event, we're seeing a significant increase in demand for services. Um, unemployment and loss of insurance has resulted in a, an increase in need, uh, and we, we are ready, willing, and able to expand to meet those needs. The other thing that's happened with the COVID event is the um, two of the three free healthcare services that provided dental have either stopped those services or dramatically reduced those services. So we're seeing a pretty significant increase in, in the need for free dental. Uh, we have only three chairs at our current location and really no way to expand that capacity in our current location. Uh, in this new location, we, we will look at expanding uh, that service uh, to meet those additional needs. So from a funding standpoint, um, the building is available to us at $2.6 million. Uh, we would like to buy that building and, and occupy it for the foreseeable future, but with the current funding available, what we're proposing is a 15 year lease purchase option. Uh, we would prepay uh, five years of that and use the balance of the funds to do the tenant improvements required to make that uh, facility serviceable for battleground healthcare. Well, just in case you're wondering, uh, Lloyd is a, uh, has a background in uh, contract engineering, 45 years, and he retired four years ago. And so um, Battleground Healthcare Board um, brought him on to be our consultant and project uh, engineer um, and uh, to allow us to be able to work through all that is involved to be able to take on this uh, this wonderful initiative. So um, so that's why it's the Lloyd and Sue. <laughs> so she couldn't stand me being retired for four years, she put me back to work. <laughs> Are there questions? I have a question, Melita from Town of Yakult here. Uh, if we proceed with this option, what do you, and this may be a difficult question to answer, but when do you expect to be open and serving uh, the community? So the current schedule is, is that we anticipate uh, signing the 15-year uh, lease purchase option on or about April 1st. We, we're looking at about three months for the uh, renovations that are required. So we're looking at trying to be operational by late July, or early August. Wow, that's much sooner than I anticipated. Thank you. Yeah. This location also um, is so well designed. It has a whole separate entrance for laboratory services. So we're looking at being able to have a full section that we are going to call um, our um, vaccine site. So we would be applying to be able to uh, give COVID vaccines and also flu vaccines at this site. Um, it's it's got a perfect perfect location for that, and uh, certainly it the people that we serve are the ones who are going to are now and are going to continue to be challenged in getting um, vaccines, whether it's flu or COVID. And I believe COVID in the future um, is going to be just one of those. Um, annual vaccines that we all are going to need either yearly or on a booster type of basis. So we're excited. This is a continuity of care for us, uh, for all the people that come to see us. Also, uh, we have three new internal medicine providers who have come alongside us um, to start providing care. We are excited. They are already seeing clients and uh, we, we have um, middle of this month, we have a mental health provider who is going to start providing uh, counseling services for our clients. And we're seeing a lot of people who are struggling with um, depression and uh, other mental health um, conditions due to COVID, let alone what they had going prior. And she is bringing alongside uh, one of her colleagues. So. We're really excited about being able to add the mental health component to our services. And this new location will allow us to have that uh, specific site. I can keep talking because there's a lot we'd like to share, but <laughs> I'll let you ask. Well, it sounds fantastic. And um, 
I, I know the group is excited to help financially support this project. Um, other questions? All right, doesn't look like it. Thank you so much. Do we have anything else on this topic? Does the board want to award all of this funding to this project? This is uh, Dave Scott. Can you just remind us um, what our plan was to try to be responsive to the New Heights Clinic? They're a little bit delayed in, in their project, and it's great that Battleground can move forward in such a great way. Uh, I just was wondering if you could remind us what the plan was. Of course. Um, so I've been, I've been keeping in touch with New Heights and they are going through the county zoning change process, which means um, they'll have an idea in October um, that, which is a perfect timing for our 2022 applications. So in October, they should know um, whether their zoning change was approved by the council, which we we're expecting it will be. Um, and then I was hoping, uh, I mentioned, I think, before to the board that perhaps they could apply through our regular 2022 round, but we could lift the cap. We currently say um, applications have to be 300,000 or less. We could um, let them apply for the full 600,000. That would certainly take a chunk out of our 2022 CDBG funding, but um, it's, it's a great project. And perhaps if you, um, didn't want to remove the cap, they could still apply for the 300,000. And uh, the timing for next spring getting an award um, would be good timing for um, their zoning and their ability to move forward next spring. Thank you for reminding You mentioned earlier about um, the extensive funding that might be coming through on I forget the name of the act or the acronym, the new one that's gone back to the House uh, after the Senate uh, did something uh, to it and amending it. Is there opportunity in that? Can you describe again on that? Is there opportunity in that um, to enhance our regular process next year? I don't know if maybe Michael or Councillor Olson could speak more to that. I know the county will, it looks like the county will be getting some direct funds, but I'm not sure exactly how those would um, be used. Yes, yeah, so so I think so. Oh, go, go ahead, ahead Councillor Olson. Well, I, I was going to say that at this point, we, we do not know, uh, David, at least I do not know um, to what extent. Um, the funding, the American Rescue Plan uh, funding that will be coming to the county, um, we will be able to utilize it in, you know, in this forum or or uh, in our home and CDBG funding process. And I think that you know there may also be some HUD funds coming down the line, but um, you know the timing of it and any specific rules that that will come with it. Uh, and what impact that may have, I at this point, we do not know yet. Yeah, and I was gonna kind of say the same thing. So we don't know exactly what the timing might look like. If there's certainly um, CDBG funds or other funds that are in a separate pot than what the county gets directly from um, the federal government, we'll take a look at that. And um, it looks like it could be a significant amount if it, if it, if it is what we think it could be, um, but we would look at, um, at what additional funds are provided through CDBG and then what other opportunities we have in the community to uh, to allocate those funds. But we don't know what the time looks like. We don't know what the rules look like. And uh, we have to wait for the bill to get passed, so. Great, thank you. Yeah, it looks like great opportunity coming to our communities and it'll be a nice problem to have to try to sort through all of that. I'm sure the UCPB would look forward to uh, looking at options, uh, you know, if that's what the council decides to do. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so back to this question then with regard to, um, our battleground project here, what's the, 
what are the thoughts of the board? What's the direction of the board here? And does Samantha or Michael, do you have any additional recommendations for the for the group? Uh, I don't have anything else. I um, I did want well share that um, the state is offering their CDBG funding as a competitive process um, and. It's one of the first times that I know of that entitlement jurisdictions, which Clark County is an entitlement jurisdiction, um, can apply to the state for some of their CDBG funding. And I was um, planning to do that for battleground healthcare. And depending on their timeline, um, I could also do that for New Heights. But, uh, they haven't released their application yet, so I'm a little unclear on exactly um, what they're looking for and what would be competitive and what their timeline would be. And what? What funds are available? Do we have a, a value? How much? Yes, I do have that and I can send that out. I think I want to say 7 million. Okay. Well, and the 7 million statewide. Okay. Okay. Got it. But, and I don't really have anything uh, to add. Uh, Councilor Olson and board, uh, you know, regarding this, uh, this specific project and proposal, you know, the numbers that are there in terms of the CB3 award and the available funding, you know, that's the cash that we have in hand uh, right now that we could uh, put towards this project if that's the desire of the board. Um, you know, regarding new heights, I, I just completely agree with uh, Samantha's assessment of the timing of the new heights proposal our our next funding round you know the fall the the fall cycle that opens really works out a lot better for them which also makes this funding available for this proposal um, right now um, so in my mind uh, you know this this makes sense given what we have and what we know and and the timelines that exist this is Chair Schroescher. Can we move to approve this? Absolutely. Okay, I'd like to move to approve uh, awarding the Battleground Healthcare the CDBG CV3 award. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Dave, I'll second that. Thank you, Dave. Uh, further discussion, comments from the board? Okay, again, I'll just add that, um, you know, I'll, I'll speak as the, as the chair here that we are excited to, one, have this money available to you and, and have it go to such a great project. So thank you for all the work that you've done to get us here. And after that, if there's no other comment, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, that motion passes. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank you. We're excited. You're, you're welcome. Uh, all right, uh, item number four, October, December 2020 quarterly report review. Thank you. Decision. And uh, next slide, please. Oh, wait, no, we got the, the right slide. Sorry about that. And Rebecca, I believe you're doing this, uh, these couple slides. Yes, um, Samantha, does this have the reports in there? This presentation? Yeah, I thought Michael might want to update on the treasury funds and the emergency rental assistance and the shelter. So I tucked in an extra program update slide, but we can just move right into the quarterly reports. Yes, um, and and could you could you back it uh, one slide, Samantha? And I'm sorry, uh, Rebecca. I I was just thinking the quarterly reports, and yes, uh, we I did want to update the UCPB on uh, other funding efforts that are going on and and things that the the unit is working on that are not completely um, uh, related to the ucpb at least uh, with the first two bullets so um, clark county um, is receiving a direct allocation from the u.s treasury department of 14.7 million dollars for emergency rental assistance of people who are currently housed or have a lease um, and uh, they may owe uh, rental arrears and, and they may not be able to pay their existing rent and that's a significant amount of people um, in the county right now 
Um, that uh, that direct allocation of 14.7 million, uh, we believe, is going to help a maximum uh, amount, you know, up to about 2,200 households. Um, and that's just uh, figuring, you know, that's just based on about six thousand uh, dollars of assistance per household going towards rental arrears, utility assistance. Um, we are um, expecting that the actual assistance that will go out will be much higher. Um, the community action, community action, housing and development um, uh, unit, which is, you know, uh, what I oversee. Samantha, Rebecca, and some other staff members uh, work in as well. Uh, we've been working with uh, local service providers and the state to formulate guidance around this program, uh, forms that need to be used, and which service providers are going to be providing some assistance. Um, right now, it um, it looks like um, share and council for the homeless are going to be the core service providers for the general public um, of rental assistance. Clark Public Utility is going to be providing the utility assistance to the general public. Um, Lifeline Connections is also going to be assisting Council for the Homeless and SHARE um, with uh, uh, rental assistance. And with focused uh, populations, the Clark County Veterans Assistance Center is really going to be focusing and providing assistance to veterans. Bridgeview Housing. Um, is which is a local agency that works pretty closely with Vancouver Housing Authority is going to be focusing on assistance for BIPOC communities, Black, Indigenous, or people of color, and um, Partners in Careers is going to be focusing on the immigrant community, and Janice Youth is going to be focusing on um, the youth population, and and when we're talking youth, you know, we mean up to 25 years of age. So there are quite a few youth households that do have, you know, that would uh, meet the requirements for this assistance. There are also several other providers that we're working uh, with. Uh, Vancouver Housing Authority is going to be um, receiving some funds to uh, attend to um, some of the tenants in, in their housing specifically. Um, we've been in conversations with some other providers, such as Impact Northwest, Reach. Um, so, service providers that will be participating in this program, I, I expect, are going to be increasing. Um, and we are currently working on contract drafts, finalizing guidelines, and we are hopeful that um, this rental assistance will be able to start going out to the community uh, by the end of March. There is some additional guidance still coming from the Treasury Department, even as we speak, that is being waited on. Um, but we are, we are hopeful that that will not delay our efforts as we move as fast as we can to get this assistance out to the community. Um, in addition to this direct allocation, there are some Funds that are going to be coming to us for the same purpose um, from the state, uh, from uh, Washington State Department of Commerce. There are also treasury funds, but these are the funds that went to the states to then allocate to the counties. So Clark County received 14.7 million from a direct allocation to the county, and then the the county portion that's being distributed by the state of these same type of federal funds with this purpose, um, we will be receiving an additional $15.4 million um, that we're basically going to streamline into, you know, it's the same eligibility criteria, the same basic guidelines um, that, uh, that are coming with these funds. So we're going to like, you know, leverage what we're set. We've been setting up for the county direct allocation program, so that basically we we have a a deeper fund uh, to provide assistance to the community uh, using both the state and the county direct allocation program. So that combined, um, basically thirty million dollars, um, we're expecting in total is going to serve about. 
less than 5,000 households based on the amount of need um, that the households that we're expecting the households to have. Um, the best data we have from uh, Council for the Homeless and from the state and, and from the Community Foundation is that there could be about 15,000 households in Clark County that need this kind of emergency rental assistance. So, um, you know, this is a lot of money and it's not nearly enough to meet the local need that has been created by the economic conditions that came with uh, the pandemic. So we are working as fast as we can to get this assistance available to the community. So that's on the Treasury rental emergency, emergency rental assistance, uh, county direct allocation and state allocation. Does anyone have any questions about that? Any questions, Michael? I will say I did the quick math because it's just what I do. <laughs> um, that 30 million does seem like a lot of money um, and 5,000 households doesn't seem like very many. Uh, but when you do the math, that's about $6,000 per household, which then and also doesn't seem like a lot of money. So um, anyway, for what that, it's worth. Absolutely, Councillor Olson. And um, what we've seen, um, six thousand dollars of assistance per household. You know, we're just averaging that out. You know, the way this program works is that households can receive a maximum of twelve months of assistance, and we're we're thinking that w we know from uh, calls that we've been getting that there are lots of households that have well over twelve months of arrears and uh, rental assistance needs. So the actual average of funds that go out to households that need assistance is likely to be higher than $6,000, which means fewer households assisted. So that is, um, it's gonna go fast. These funds do need to be expended by December 31st. I do not expect that to be a challenge. Um, the bigger challenge that we're gonna have is basically managing our local community service providers capacity to get out this amount of funding in uh, you know, in this year time frame, um, there will be some additional emergency rental assistance dollars that are coming with the American Rescue Plan. We believe that will be an additional about $30 million, but we do not have any more information about that yet. Um, but it's going to be, uh, it is going to be a challenge to get out to the community and we will figure that challenge out because the community needs that support. So, Michael, on that topic of the logistics of getting this money out, um, is that something that you would bring back to the Urban County Policy Board for, as a report, or how, how are you going to, is that something you would present to the council? How does that work? Because I know we had the same kind of concern and issue with the funding we received last year um, in terms of economic stabilization, what we did with that. So, this is a big deal in terms of the logistics to get it out. So, can you speak to that for a minute? Sure, absolutely. And, um, and yes, I can uh, and be happy to, to report uh, to the Urban County Policy Board on where we're at and where we're going. You know, you know there, and, and uh, Councillor Olson, I do believe um, we are going to be doing some report outs to the council, um, uh, possibly, uh, you know, about the American Rescue Plan dollars and, and the capacity to um, implement programs related to those funds. It may be as early as um, March, as next week's uh, council hearing or board time. I believe that the Vanessa and Mark Gassaway are having conversations on the scheduling of those uh, with Kathleen Otto uh, right now. So yeah, so yeah, that is going to be coming to the council. Um, there are two. Most of what we will discuss, uh, bring forward with the council, at least first, is the internal to the county department capacity to um, oversee the funds, develop the contracts, work with the service providers. What do we need to do to be able to um, to to have the capacity to to do all these things? Because uh, just to give uh, the board members um, an idea, uh, in a normal year, the Community Action Housing and Development Unit, uh, there are six of us on staff, um, uh, we generally manage about $10, $12 million across all programs and about, you know, uh, depending on how we, uh, about you know, 30 different 
um, uh, programs, about 60 contracts. In 2020, we managed close to $30 million. And um, between um, March, between January and November of last year, we, um, imp uh, we implemented over 153 contracts. Um, it was, you know, the, we were stretched at capacity as, as much as we can. So far in 2021, just with these rental assistance dollars, not, you know, the, excluding anything we're talking about, home, TBRA, CDBG, community services, block grant, document recording fees, anything else, just with these treasury emergency rental assistance dollars, we are already overseeing as much funding as we did for the entirety of 2020. So there, so we will definitely have to uh, do adapt some changes to be able to do this. And we will be talking to the, uh, the county council about that. And I will absolutely uh, bring those reports to the urban county policy board as well. Thank you. And then just one more clarification. So depending on where the pot of money comes from, uh, that would dictate or inform what role the urban county policy board plays in in um, distributing those funds. So if there are CDBG grant additional funds, which we talked about earlier, is that correct? I mean, it would yeah, we come back yeah. later if we had yeah. these, you know, the types of funds that we oversee? Yes, if, if there are updates in the American Rescue Plan um, funding that, you know, increase home and CDBG and we need early implementation, we will absolutely notify the Urban County Policy Board and request meetings. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other, um, questions? any other questions before I continue? And we move on to the um, Rebecca reports uh, shortly. So the second update is uh, last year, uh, Clark County Community Services received a $2.5 million uh, grant from uh, the Washington State Department of Commerce to increase shelter, uh, emer homeless emergency shelter capacity in our, in our community. Um, that was a joint application with the city of Vancouver that was done to the Department of Commerce. Um, it is a joint project with um, the city of Vancouver and the Vancouver Housing Authority, even though the grant itself was just a joint application with the city of Vancouver. So um, the Vancouver Housing Authority has been, uh, had uh, spent a good part of last year uh, looking for a potential site to serve as a non-congregate emergency shelter. Um, they, on February 10th, they acquired a former Howard Johnson motel that's near the Vancouver Mall to serve for this purpose. And once we're out of, you know, and we anticipate this will be for about two years, three years of operating as a non-congregate homeless emergency shelter, after which the Vancouver Housing Authority is going to uh, convert um, the facility to affordable housing of low-income persons. And um, the city and uh, Clark County Community Services contributed some funds for the acquisition and Clark County Community Services is providing the state grant funds and some emergency, some emergency solutions grant, which is um, specifically for use around homeless services um, to provide dollars to operate the shelter for uh, about two to three years. Um, the operator of the shelter was solicited via a request for applications, um, which closed in early February. Um, at the end of February, a committee of um, uh, composed of Clark County staff and Vancouver Housing Authority staff and City of Vancouver staff uh, selected the operator based on applications as Catholic Community Services of Western Washington. And we are currently in um, the contract negotiation phase um, with that operator. We are hopeful um, that this shelter will begin to operate around June, although that is a pretty ambitious timeline. So that's the update on the non-congregate shelter. Any questions on that?
are no questions. The last update is uh, really Samantha has already mentioned it. Uh, most of what I have to say, just about everything that I have to say, which is the state community development block grant program um, is making, and I believe for the first time ever, two other CDBG and home um, uh, jurisdiction and sub, uh, jurisdictions and sub grantees in the state about seven million dollars of state CDBG COVID funding. Um, uh, we can apply, um, you know, they're, they're going to release an application. We, we have not seen it yet um, to receive additional funds to apply to existing programs that have a shortfall. Um, when they release the application, we will plan to apply. So we just have more funds available and we will um, inform the Urban County Policy Board as we um, as we move forward with the application, what the results are, if we receive more funding, and then make um, funding decisions if we receive those funds. Sam, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Um, nothing that I'd like to add, except I think that we would apply specifically for a project. I don't think they would just award us funding. I think we would have to apply showing that the battleground healthcare has a gap that we want filled. But um, we, yeah, we'll inform the board as we know more. Yes, thank, and thank you. Thank you for, for pointing that out. So, and I, what Sam is basically saying that if uh, we have to apply to these uh, uh, to these funds uh, for a specific project that has a gap, um, we will. What makes the most sense to us right now as staff is to use the battleground uh, clinic as the project that we're in the process of and still has a funding gap for uh, what they want to do. So we would, um, if we have to do a specific project, that's the one we'd, we'd likely submit for. Any questions? Okay. Is that it for the report review then, Michael? And that's it for uh, uh, our program reports, but uh, Rebecca is next with the quarterly reports. Perfect. All right. Good morning. Uh, we apologize for not getting these out uh, ahead of time, uh, but we now have it in the this presentation that will be posted on our website if you wanted to look into it a little bit uh, deeper. For the most part, projects are on schedule or were on schedule for this report period, which is October through December 2020. Um, the battleground project was put on hold due to COVID and, and all the other uh, capacity issues that went along with that. The Ridgefield project is complete and uh, fully uh, reimbursed. The battleground Southeast Clark Avenue improvements was awarded funding and will be moving uh, forward shortly. The Camus Northwest 12th Avenue pro uh, improvements project, the contract has been executed on that project and we will be doing a uh, pre-construction meeting soon and then the ridgefield simon street project we uh have awarded funding and we are now starting to work on the environmental review so that project can move forward the share elevator project uh, from 2019 is still nearly complete we are still waiting uh for a final inspection um they were scheduled to come out and then unfortunately there was a, a COVID outbreak at the shelter so uh, they had to postpone that we are still waiting for the inspector to reschedule but everything else should be done uh, once we have that inspection this project will uh, close out very quickly the washugal social services building uh, the environmental uh, is complete on that and the contract is is executed the asset and economic development programs are all on schedule. Uh, the Hispanic Metropolitan Chambers 2019 project is completed and they served 42 small businesses and did multiple virtual workshops for agencies or for new uh, business development. The Proud Ground Home Ownership Acquisition Project uh, program is done. They did assist three households in purchasing uh, new affordable single family homes. Um, and the programs are now starting their 2020 funding as of January. Next slide. In affordable housing, second step housing, um, they were, their project is nearly complete. This is where they are building new town homes. So those will be coming online shortly. 
the Grand Boulevard uh, Grand Pacific Apartments, uh, the contract and legal documents are, are executed and they've got all their financing in place. So this project should be moving uh, forward soon. Mercy Housing's uh, new housing of 70 units is um, going through the process. The environmental is complete and they've received their tax credits. Uh, so this project will be moving uh, along soon. Um, and the same with the Central Park Place Rehab Project, that environmental is currently under the way, underway and they did receive their tax credits. For tenant-based rental assistance, our uh, Lifelines 2018 program is uh, now complete, uh, but is being um, continuing on in 2020 with their new contract. Janus Youth has uh, completed or is nearly complete with their 2019 program. Uh, COVID slowed them down a little bit on their spending um, of their um, project, but it's basically done and they were able to assist 17 households. The Share Aspire program um, is also uh, nearly complete. Uh, they were able to serve 38 households and then their 2020 contracts are uh, executed so that they can move forward with the assistance uh, this year. The lifeline recovery rental assistance, as I mentioned, was um, now they're starting their 2020 contract. Next slide. And then just a quick overview of the COVID funding that we received in CDBG. Um, the Mercy Corps, their uh, micro enterprise assistance is moving forward. Um, the Hispanic Chamber um, business technical assistance project is, is working through. So all of these projects are going forward um, and they have a little bit of time to spend out the funds. And we've already had a lot of discussion about the battleground health healthcare building. And that is up it for the quarterly reports. Thank you, Rebecca. Any questions? That's because they're so thorough and complete. So thank you for that. Um, all right, uh, wrapping up. Do we ask for public comment? Just looking at this. Uh, yes, we, we usually uh, make some space uh, if there is any interested public calling in, um, you know, now's the time for a comment. Okay, do we have any public comment or any other? So this is Jim with the uh, city of Camas. Hi, Jim. Uh, was, was curious if uh, Clark County staff have an indication of, uh, you know, if the uh, CDBG contracts will be delayed again from HUD in 2021 or if they have uh, some some things in place that might move things along a little quicker this year. Um, I don't know that. I, I don't I, I don't know, uh, Jim, if I'm not expecting contracts to be delayed from HUD uh, this year. Um, I don't know that they're putting anything in place to try to expedite things either. Um, but I would anticipate the contracting schedule to uh, follow what the, their proposed timeline usually is. So we're probably looking, and Sam, you know, please. Correct me if I'm wrong, like we were probably looking at contracts from HUD approved around August or by August, correct? That sounds right to me. That's their usual time frame. I don't know if the transition to a new administration will speed things up or slow things down. I guess it could go either way. Okay, thanks for the information. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jim. Other public comment? This is Sue Neal, Executive Director at Battleground Healthcare. Just once again, I just want to express our sincere gratitude uh, to all of you for your generous support of our project and the ability for us to uh, serve the community with so many people in need. And this is this is just an exciting opportunity to do that. So thank you again. 
Well, on behalf of the Urban County Policy Board, you're very welcome. We look forward to seeing the progress. We're excited for an open house. Absolutely. <laughs> this is Dave Scott. I just <clears throat> I just wanted to put a plug in for the team at the county. <clears throat> Chair, you know that your team is doing a lot of, I don't want to call it extra work, but it's extra work because of all this great funding that's being provided uh from various levels of government and there's just a lot of work that goes into running these programs and just by virtue of the report we just received it it seems like almost there's like three times sort of the distribution of funding or there's just significant distribution going out so i know all of us in the city small cities as well are doing a lot of um, for lack of a better term extra work in response to covid um, and it's really outstanding to see that happening and to see this whole county coming together. And so just kudos, kudos to this team specifically and everyone at the county. Thanks, David. And I actually, until Michael had uh, outlined it, didn't really realize the amount of money that was going through that particular department as well. So um, I agree, everyone in Clark County, all our jurisdictions, um, staff at the county here just and it's not going to stop. We, we still have a lot of work to do as we get through 2021. So. Other comments. Okay, um, hey, this is, just, I have a quick comment. Sorry. This is Katie at proud ground. I just wanted to, you know, thank you all for your continued um, support and partnership with our organization and uh, we're looking forward to continuing to serve more Clark County families. So, thank you. Thank you for the work that you do and your and your organization does. So, Michael, and who's going to talk about National Community Development Week? I, I can I can do that, and there isn't a you know just awareness. Um, this National Community Development Week is going to be uh, April fifth through ninth. Um, if you as cities and um, have proclamations if, uh, that you're putting together and you want help with that, let us know. If uh, in the process of putting your proclam proclamations together or any activities that you plan to do and you need program information regarding how has home or how has CDBG impacted your specific locality, uh, we have that information. Please ask and we will uh, provide it as soon as we can. Sam, is there anything else you'd want to add to that? Um, I would just say that you, the small cities don't have to write a proclamation. I have the proclamation um, and I'm happy to share it and you can tweak it. Um, I'll probably be reaching out by email with the, with the proclamation and then um, I can customize it for your city or you can and um, thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, anything else for the good of the order? Thoughts, comments? Well, I will only say, um, you know, again, great work and and um, we still have a lot more work to do coming up here in 2021, but thanks for everyone's participation. Uh, and if there's nothing else, we will adjourn. Thanks everyone. Thank you, take care everyone. Thank you everyone. Thanks very much. Bye everyone.